Today we'll be doing a proof regarding LBAs, which are these linear bounded automata, which are Turing machines that have these two endpoints. And what's on the tape is what it's provided as input. So if I give you a longer input, you got more tape on your hands. So the problem that we're going to be interested in today is something called the ELBA problem, which is asking the question, given an LBA, is does it accept nothing? Is it possible for it to accept nothing? And we saw before that the A sub LBA problem is decidable because we can just simulate the LBA for a certain amount of time before we can actually detect that it's in an infinite loop because it can't actually acquire more memory. Whereas the emptiness problem will show as undecidable. So it's not possible for the emptiness problem to be decided for LBAs. So this is in stark contrast to everything we saw before where the, the acceptance and the emptiness question were either both decidable or both undecidable. Here's where the break happens, where a break happens, I guess. All right, so uh, we'll show that this is undecidable. So how do you actually show that this is undecidable? Well, we can't use Rice's theorem because Rice's theorem talks about Turing machines. So if this was ETM, then we could use it. Uh, because it's dealing with Turing machines, but this is LBA, so we have to use something else. So the way that we'll do this is we'll suppose that it is decidable. So let's suppose that E LBA is decided by, let's call it E. So the machine E takes it, LBA as input and figures out whether its language is uh, empty or not. And then what we'll try to do We'll, what we'll try to do is try to decide the ATM problem. So remember, ATM takes a Turing machine as input, not an LBA, because the, we, and we can't use ALBA here because ALBA is decidable, and that wouldn't help us at all. So what we need to do is try to decide ATM. You could, you could make it for other undecidable problems, but ATM is the standard way of doing it. Okay, so how do we actually do this? So what we need to do is we need to create a, uh, we need to make an uh, LBA in such a way so that it, it has something to do with a Turing machine accepting an input. So we need to uh, create an LBA, let's call it B, such that the language of B is empty if and only if, uh, or uh, not empty if and only if, it doesn't actually matter here. Uh, it only, if and only if M, which is a Turing machine, accepts W, okay? So we need to have this LBA embed some information about whether a Turing machine accepts an input. And there are some ways you can do this, but the one standard way is let's have it uh, LB, the language of B be empty uh, if M accepts W and not empty if M does not accept W. Here we're actually going to do it a different way, which is we're gonna have it be not empty if M accepts W and it is empty if it doesn't accept W. So it's the opposite question, but that's okay. Okay, so how do we actually do this? So how do I actually create this uh, LBA B? Well, uh, what is some information about M accepting W that we can actually recognize by an LBA? Is there something that we could do with an LBA with a limited amount of space that uh, has some information about M accepting W? So, we're gonna actually use something called the computation history method, and I'll tell you what that means in a sec. So a configuration is a string in gamma star Q gamma star. And recall that gamma is the tape alphabet and Q is a set of states. So this is a single state uh, in this written string right here. And we got some tape stuff before, some tape stuff after. And recall that that means that we're trying to encode what's on the tape as a string. 
Okay, so then importantly, what we're going to call a computation history, which is a string, which is the string of the form uh, pound sign C0, pound sign C1, pound sign C2, and then it goes up to, let's say, M. And the properties of this are that C0 is the starting configuration, which is where we have the start state followed by the input. So it's the very start of what the machine is doing. And CI yields CI plus one for all I. And purely what that means is that uh, the thing that's representing the state of the machine at this point right here, C1, the, if we apply one transition, we're going to get C2. So it's yielding all of the, the, the configurations along the way. So in fact, what this is doing is it's giving us a history of what the machine is doing. And uh, finally, we'll say that the computation history is accepting if uh, the last one, CM, is... Uh, I'll, actually, I'll say it this way. If CM contains that accept state, Q accept. And so this is, uh, these computation histories are with Turing machines. Um, because if it was LBAs, we would know what to do here in order to figure out whether this is a computation history. But an LBA actually could determine if it's given this gigantic string, it, if it's given this string, the LBA could figure out whether or not this is a valid accepting computation history. And that's what I claim. So an LBA uh, give, let's say given a string W, actually I'll say X, can determine if X encodes and accepting computation, I abbreviated it, so CH, accepting computation history of a Turing machine M on input W. And uh, I'll briefly argue why that's the case. So the only information that we need to know, uh, the LBA needs to figure out is, is the starting one a, the starting config? So it's given this input W, and it can say, well, is the, is the first block going to be Q0 followed by W? It can figure out whether the last one is accepting because we just need to search for the accept state because we're given the Turing machine M in advance. So we have all the states, we could bake all the states of this Turing machine M into the LBA in some way. So we can figure out whether this one is the accept one. And we can figure out whether the, each one of these is yielding the next one along the way, because all that we need to figure out is, well, everything around where the tape head is originally, we just, uh, is gonna be exactly the same. But the things that are really close to where the tape head is, is it legally valid in terms of M's transition function? And there's only a finite number of transitions, so we can bake all of those in into the LBA's transitions. And notice that we never needed additional space beyond where the input actually is. Remember, the LBA gets space for the entire input, no more, and it doesn't need any more space than that because checking whether this is valid is just living in this region. Checking whether this one is the accepting one, you're only here. And checking if you're yielding the next one, you only need to deal with adjacent ones and you never will go off the ends on either side. So in fact, an LBA could actually figure this out. Okay, so an LBA could figure this out, but why are we actually doing this? So if M accepts W, then that means that there is an accepting computation history, okay? And there can only be one because the Turing machine is actually deterministic. We'll just assume it's deterministic here. And if it does not accept W, then there can't possibly be 
a, an accepting computation history, because if it were, if there was one, then the last one, it would encode the history of what the machine did, which would imply that the Turing machine did accept W, which is a contradiction. So uh, we have that the language of this machine B is not empty if and only if M accepts W. But as I said, that's okay. It doesn't actually matter here very much. Okay, so what are we actually going to do here? It's actually very simple. So we're going to decide ATM using the supposed decider for E sub LBA. So on input MW, where M is a Turing machine and W is some, str some string, then what we're going to do is we're going to build the LBA B, oops, not M, B using M and W as above. So the B here entirely depends on the Turing machine and the input that it's given. So it, it will need to know what those are before the process of building the LBA can begin, but that's okay because they're provided as input and we can have the LBA, uh, the structure of the LBA depend entirely on those because it's given as input, which is totally okay. And then what we'll do is we'll run that supposed decider E on that LBA we just made. And then we can figure out what it does. So if E accepts, it must accept a reject because it's a decider by assumption. So if it does accept, that says that the LBA's language is empty, which means that there is no accepting computation history of this Turing machine on input W, which means that M could not have possibly accepted W. So that means we need to reject. And very analogously, if E rejects, that means there is a, a an accepting computation history because it says that the language is not empty, which means M does accept W, so we need to accept. But obviously, uh, ATM is undecidable, so uh, is therefore E sub LBA. So this is actually quite striking in the fact that uh, we can get an uh, undecidability re result for something quote-unquote less powerful than a Turing machine, namely for the emptiness problem. So one thing I want you to figure out is, what about the universality problem, which is all sub LBA? Uh, can we get an undecidability result there? Because before they were in co they were coinciding the emptiness and the all problem. They were either both decidable or both undecidable. But is there a case where the ELBA problem is undecidable here and this one is decidable, or are they both undecidable? So that would be an interesting question. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this proof down into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.